Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Global Space Program 1.8.1. I have made some new parts for the Orion carrier plane and we need to test them out. First of all, there is this carrier mount for the Star Stage 2, which is this stage up here. And we need to make sure that that decouples off properly. You can see it's sort of form-fitted, which is a little bit bad because of course that means it can't really deal with other payloads unless they're shaped the same way, but at least it looks better than the stock decoupler uh, for this particular payload, so we sort of made a half-hearted effort at aerodynamics here. Uh, but yeah, so there's that. But more importantly, we have replaced the engines. Instead of using Raptor engines, I have developed the Rex engine because it's larger than Raptor. It's physically larger because it wor works at a lower chamber pressure, uh, 3,200 psi, which is not low, low. It's still stage combustion and everything. but. It is about the level of the shuttle SSMEs, and there's a reason for that as well. The fact that they are lower pressure means they're physically larger, which means they are more massive. 2.7 tons. I had the Raptors at 2 tons. Those are Raptor sea levels. We have given these slightly longer nozzles. Their nozzle ratio is 42. And as a result, they're, uh, because of the lower chamber pressure and larger nozzle, their sea level ISP is lower. Uh, than the Raptors were, so we have to see whether that has a detrimental effect. And the vacuum ISP is the same, basically, as what I had the Raptor sea levels at, and that because the lower chamber pressure does not uh, sort of hurts it, but then the nozzle uh, makes up for that. So we have a little bit more thrust, uh, 23, uh, 2,346 here, but you can see that because the engine is more massive now, it does not have a thrust to weight ratio of 100 even. And of course, Raptor is like close to 200 on the sea level version. So we have severely knocked down the performance of this overall. And the question is whether we can still make it basically. 6.3 tons, I mean, it's, it isn't light, right? It's 0.7 tons per engine and we have nine of them. So yeah, it is a substantial mass in the back. But to some extent that was meant to help because the center of mass seemed to be too far forward. We had to use a lot of pitch authority to keep our nose up. And the reason why uh, the center of mass was too far forward in this design was because we used to have jet engines in the back here. Also, two extra fins. So there was a lot more mass in the back in the original design. And maybe adding more mass in the engines would, be a, uh, would actually make up for that. Now, whether that hurts our ability to add more engines onto this, more jet engines again, I don't know. It's possible to just move the jet engines up like over here, uh, you know, or underslung on the wings. Um, I wouldn't like underslung on the wings, actually. Maybe over here would be better. And that would be closer to center mass and it wouldn't change too much. But, uh, of course, in one way, uh, this could uh, hurt our performance as far as being able to get the payload to 4,000 meters per second orbital velocity, which we used to be able to do. Um, on the other hand, it might help because we, we, we're using a little bit less fuel than we were supposed to. We, were, we ended up with too much fuel at the end of the main burn. And so we'll probably use up some more fuel like this in order to carry the extra tonnage of the engines. And that might actually help us in coming back down because on the way back down, uh, the key number is how much mass you're putting on the surface area. And the less mass you have in the carrier plane, given the same surface area, the more drag it's going to get. Well, the more actual force it's going to experience, deceleration it's going to experience. So that is a positive. So uh, how is this all going to shape up? I don't know. We're going to try it out. So let's find out. One extra positive is, of course, we do have a little bit more thrust. So that will help somewhat. But anyway, SAS on, throttle is up. A, uh, let me aim camera at this so that it doesn't jerk when we release the clamps. Okay, ignition. I've got the quick ignition that the Raptors had. Still. So here we go. I'm looking into relocating to Tampico. It seems like a nice area. It's, I think, also not environmentally protected, so that, that would probably help. Uh, it's not as scenic as over here, but it is closer to the equator, which is good. And 
there are all sorts of other positives about it. So, um, and so, hopefully, the new trajectory would be Tampico to the Bahamas. Now, that's only if it still over, it tends to overshoot Cape Canaveral. If it doesn't still overshoot Cape Canaveral, I'll have to think about the Bahamas because the Bahamas are further away from Tampico than Cape Canaveral was from Boca Chica. So. If it doesn't overshoot this time, then that might not be the best thing to do, unless we refit the jet engines on. Uh, a good reason to have it going to the Bahamas uh, is that we're not going to overfly populated areas like that. So on the current trajectory to Cape Canaveral, one of the problems is that we are flying over Tampa and Orlando. So uh, if something goes wrong with the carrier plane, which is supposed to be automated, and that's not so good. Okay, well, we're getting orbital velocity. I need to flatten out quickly. Okay, and let me throttle down a bit. We'll try for 4,000. Looks like we have enough fuel. I hope it hasn't been draining this. Okay, no, it hasn't. It's possible that I accidentally made the decoupler cross feed enabled. That would be bad. Okay, Okay. well that's 4,000, so we can get to 4,000. Let's turn on RCS here. Decouple. Um, the coupler might need to be shift. Uh, you see how we're getting knocked down like this? Obviously we don't want that. It doesn't seem like too much of a different position, but I think we do have less fuel than we had before on the ending. It's actually a lot better than I thought it would be. I thought we wouldn't be able to make 4,000 meters per second, actually. Uh, I forgot to make an action group for those five engines. I'm not going to do it right now, because that needs to be done in the BAB, so that we make sure we can turn off the gimbling and the activation of those engines. Well, we might still be looking to overshoot here, I don't know. Again, it depends on how much drag we have when we hit the atmosphere. We don't directly overfly Tampa like this. We're just sort of immediately north of it. Uh, that that blue spot right there, I think, is Orlando, though. And we have no communication, which is normal. Let's see, this part, uh, maybe it's better to go for the Bahamas instead of this. It seems like NASA would not take kindly to this sort of thing. Uh, it's wiggling, but we saw that on the previous one. Oh, there goes the stage. Uh, yeah, obviously that's supposed to continue going. Sorry, citizens of Florida. See, that wouldn't happen either. So, I have other purposes for these Rex engines. Again, I named that way because they're simply larger than Raptors. We're going back down. We are overshooting a bit, so maybe... Maybe the Bahamas would not be a bad idea. But I don't know if we're, we could overshoot by a factor of 200 miles, which is, or maybe it's about, about more like 150 miles, which is the difference between the distance from Boca Chica to Cape Canaveral and from Tampico to the Bahamas. So it's a big difference. But yeah, maybe we could make it on that leg. Can we turn around? Uh, it's possible we could get back to Cape Canaveral, we'll see. We're still maxing out pitch here, but I guess there's not too much hope that that's not going to happen. We need to pitch down anyway. We were at Mach 3. I could take control now. I like to zero out the pitch before taking control. Okay, off and atmospheric autopilot. And turning. Yeah, you can see how much it does not like to turn even now. It's better at slower speeds and lower altitudes. Thin air and high speeds are not conducive to turning quickly. It might even be turning worse now. I feel like. Oh, 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 it's going off kilter. Oh, oh, oh no. Uh, oh, no, it, it stalled out. It stalled out. Um, I, 
need to sell the fuel down if we're going to use the engines. Okay. Uh, uh, that might not be good enough. We just lost all that speed anyway. Okay, well, something is definitely not going to, well, I can't even see Cape Canaveral now. Well, uh, let me not belabor this. Let me try it again and see if I can do it properly or if it's just doomed to go awry. So let's revert flight. Okay, here we go again. SAS on, throttle up, aim camera. And the ignition. And go. It actually takes most of its time in space just for it to orient properly. Its RCS thrusters aren't the most powerful things on the planet. Okay, initial descent. Not expecting anything too different here. I'm gonna pitch down. Oh, I should have waited until I had actual communication there, though. Honestly, I think we probably would have communication right now, given where Cape Canaveral is. It still thinks we're in plasma or something. But I'll wait. And then I'll pitch down a little bit so that we end up lower, but uh, with more speed since we stalled out last time. I think that's what's going to happen if I pitch down a little bit. Right now it's not maxing out the pitch at 24 degrees. On the other hand, it's wiggling a lot. Okay, I've flattened it out, but it's not yet below Mach 3. I probably should have a little bit of angle of attack, otherwise it's going to keep going down like that. This might be a good time to use the air brakes if they want to come out. They're not coming out. <laughs> Why do I even have them on? Okay, now I'll try and take control. And I'll try not to throw it off this time. With uh, atmospheric autopilot, of course, active right now. You will turn with exceeding gentleness. Not even looking at where I'm going right now. Probably we're too far away. Okay, I've leveled out. Let's see. Yep. Alright, we're too far away again. Gotta try and ignite. Okay, let's see where that gets us. But, yeah, I think... Uh, Further off, landing site would be better. But not much else has changed with the engine swap. So I guess that's a positive. Alright, well, I don't know what else to do. I'm just gonna use the rest of the engine power. Well, there we go. I mean, we're not too, too far off. We're just super low right now. We can sort of see the coastline over there. But, uh, yeah, I don't know if we can get enough gliding out of this to get over there. I think we're way too far north. I think the cape is all the way back there. That doesn't help anything. Okay, yeah, we're, we're not too far off actually if you take a look at our coordinates. Um, but we are definitely not landing where we're supposed to be landing. We're here. Cape Canaveral's there. We just, actually, if I had aimed a little bit better, I think we might have been able to make it, but we ended up too far north. But, yeah, I think the most prudent course is to change sites. But then I also want to have the photo scenery at both sites, you see, that's the trick. I mean, it's easy to say okay well we'll launch out of Tampico and land at Cape Canaveral oh, okay we better pitch down more we're gonna stall 
Uh, we're stalling. Uh, oh, okay. Well, water physics. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, it's easy to say we gotta change a lot of sites, but I, I need to put the pad there, and then of course I want to have nice photo scenery in those locations, so it's gotta take a little bit more work for me to be satisfied about those sites. But yeah, that's probably the easiest thing. The other alternative, if we really wanted to keep Boca Chica to Cape Canaveral, is either put jets on or increase the size of the wing to increase the drag. Um, either of those, of course, decreases our payload capacity. So, uh, But both of those would probably be safer, to be honest. Uh, yeah, we might... Uh, I'll look into what happens if we actually put the jets on. That might be another test. Oh, did we lose the bomb? We lost the bottom row of engines at some point. I guess on the splashdown, the bottom row of engines got hit. You'd see a Rex here. Uh, it, it just says one Rex splashdown hard and was destroyed. But there were four of them. But I guess that's all of them. G-forces injured on the splashdown 26 Gs. So that's harsh. That was at least not on the descent. The descent was like 12 Gs or so. So, more work needs to be done on this business, but uh, anyway, improvements have been made and we'll continue adjusting and look forward to the new sites coming up. So, we'll see how that works. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.